as I promised the office that we'll make it available for people who are not, who cannot join us tonight. Now I need everyone's consent when it comes to this being recorded. As we all know, being great travel directors, if you do not want to be in this little recording, even though 99% of the time it'll be me, what you can do is you can rename yourself into anything you want to remain anonymous. All you gotta do is move your finger over your own little picture and then uh, a thingy pops up with three dots. You click on that and then you can rename yourself into anything you want. Donald Duck, Donald Trump, whatever you want, whatever <laughs> makes you happy. Then uh, if you do not want your face to be seen, what you can do is you can just switch off your camera, stop video, that will be at the bottom. You just click on it, stop video. So you won't be seen either. But for the most part, it's me who's being recorded. But once in a while, I might just switch it over and record you because it's kind of cool to have two pages full of faces uh, listening and hopefully taking a, uh, a gold nugget with them. Most of you I do know personally, so it's wonderful to have you with me. My name is Dr. Q, and I've been a travel director like uh, you for one or two years. In my case, it's already so many years that I am hesitant of actually uh, stating the number of years because it might uh, give it away. But I do lead a big life outside of um, our Trafalgar universe. And I've been doing so for 30 years, ish, 25 years or so. And the whole reason being, I still have cancer. When I was uh, 16, I was diagnosed with cancer. It took me three years in and out of um, hospital. That showed me that there is more to what meets the eye. Made me aware of energies, if you wish, spirituality, and the power of the mind. Because when I was 16 years old, and I was admitted to hospital with cancer, as you can imagine, I was a god. Why me? Super angry. Obviously, I was 16 years old. What did I do to deserve this? But then three years later, when I was released as the only one surviving in my room, I was like, God, why me? Do you know what I mean? So a total shift um, in mindset. And that's uh, when I started to think, oh boy, there's got to be something out there that's a little bigger than what we are and more than what meets the eye. So that has been a lifelong journey and I grow every day. And I would like to share with you one or two golden nuggets that hopefully might help you in overcoming stress. Stress, when it comes to now, us being all hunkered down due to our lovely little coronavirus. And later on, hopefully sooner rather than later, being back on the road as, as TDs. What can I say? Seven weeks ago, just like many of you too, I received a phone call from a brother. Uh, I just had come back from the US back in Budapest because I live in Budapest now. And he said, brother, you better come to Vienna soon because you are in a high risk group having survived cancer and seven years ago, a virus almost killed me too. So I was in the ICU, some of you might know. And um, I was like, really? So I just packed a little suitcase and traveled from Budapest to Vienna, not knowing that I'd still be here seven weeks later. So the wall that's not dark and you can't see behind me is where my brother's kids sleep. I have my own little attic room and that's my makeshift office where I do indeed conduct quite many calls every day on Zoom uh, in my spiritual work. So I apologize for not being fully equipped because I did not think I'd be here seven weeks later just like I presume everyone else too. Being here and being exposed to new, um, a new environment, kids all day, every day, I realized, oh, uh, it's not only me who's suffering maybe from a, um, a situation that we're not maybe used to. And that is how the whole idea of helping you came about. Dealing with stress. First of all, I need to share with you one or two housekeeping notes. This is an online um, workshop. It's different to a live workshop. So I cannot run it the exact same way as I would usually run a workshop. And I have 25 years of experience, one-on-ones, weekend workshops, large audiences, you know, with a thousand people or so. So I have to adjust it a little bit. So I hope you understand that it's not as um, 
might not be the way that you're used to when it comes to um, uh, workshops and presentations, then um, you in a live workshop, you can whisper and chit chat, you know, and, and gossip with your neighbor here and there. In an online setting, you can't because you're muted. But what you can do, and I'm already uh, showing you this now because we need to use that in a moment or two, I'm sending everyone, you know, there's a chat function. And you can choose who you want to send a chat to. You can either send a chat to everyone as I do now, and I'm sending namaste. So boom, from me to everyone, you should all see my namaste, welcoming you to this meeting. But you want to remain, if you want to remain anonymous, you can choose the person you want to send a message to. And that's the reason why I said, can you please put down your name so whoever's in the meeting, whoever spots you in this meeting can say, oh my gosh, you know, I haven't seen you in a long time. And while, you know, Dr. Q's speaking nonsense and boring stuff, you can do a little chit chat in the background with a friend and nobody would ever know because it's a private chat. Cool. And if you want to communicate with me and you don't want everyone else to know, uh, as we're going to have some interaction here, you can also send me a private chat and I will read it or you can share with the entire audience and that would be a, a public chat, cool? So I hope you know how to utilize it. Again, use your finger on the trackpad and there will be chat function and you can send me either. Yes, I received the first private message saying namaste back to me, cool. Letizia, you really know how to rock it. Now this <laughs> is the, uh, this is the, <laughs> I, know, I, have to, I have to rub it in Letizia. Um, what can I say? The last uh, of the beginners. <laughs> great job. This is the first of a series of little um, of workshops and it builds um, on. I had no idea how many people will join. So what I did is this is a get to get, uh, get to know one another and set the, the, the foundation and then build on it. And building on it is based upon what you tell me, where you want to take this workshop in any direction helping you now and later on um, as a travel director is in any situation you tell me and we will cater it. That is the beauty of it, that I have been a guy for 25 years. So I, more than 25 years, <clears throat> I shouldn't say that. It's the Botox that makes me look um, young. That's the high-end Botox. Uh, the secret stash um, from my brother's clinic that I sometimes sneak in um, and um, do some um, beautification here. Mm. You tell me either today you know, by email, WhatsApp, and then in two weeks when we have another session, I'll take into consideration what you sent me, and then we build on it and grow there. I have some exercises for you. We will do some meditation exercises, uh, a breathing exercise, and a mind exercise that we all can do while we're in this meeting tonight. Then what else is there that I need to know? Obviously, you know, coming to this meeting, I cannot give you the, 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 the key to the whole grade of never ever being stressed again because it ain't gonna happen. Everyone's stressed, and that's part of life. And all we can do is learn how to deal with it and come out of it faster. That's all we can learn. I have stress just as, uh, as uh, everyone else too. So it's my own personal uh, journey. It's not science, scientific nonsense. It's boring as hell. But when you hear real stories, you know, we're storytellers as uh, travel directors, then it sticks better. You remember it easier. And hopefully you can then utilize it better yourself. So once, now that I've got it out, let's get started. By show of hands, you know, those of you that actually do share their video, who has ever felt stress? And, and what you can do now, you can look into the screen and you see everyone else too. You know, they, whoever is raising their hand. Hmm. Who here considers themselves as a, uh, what should I say, as a seasoned speaker and still feel stressed? And everyone else, you know, you look into the screen and you see, you know, a bunch of people raising their hands. Now, let me see you that. You've seen my hand up and I'm a very seasoned speaker. People actually pay me to speak and train them to speak. If your hand wasn't up the entire time, doesn't matter who it was in this little uh, group of ours, then you either, what should I say, have a pathological issue, are in denial, or are from Mars or Venus, depending on your gender. It really should have, we all have stress, period. There is nothing to do about it. It's just a human um, reaction to a fear. Now, but now let's dig into the meat of uh, things. Stress derives from fear. Obviously not love, because that will be the opposite. Now, fear. Something happens, a, um, an occurrence. And our reaction, when we do not know really what to do with it, 
and it's fear-based creates stress in us. And usually we fear the worst because our mind stops thinking and the fight or flight kicks in. Fear is also not a block of concrete. It's not. It's very amorphous. It changes all the time. It changes its size and it could be big, it could be gigantic, it could be super small, it could be blue, it could be black one day, um, undulating if you wish. So it's never the same. Sometimes we can easily deal with it, it's not, not a big deal, and sometimes it's just overwhelming altogether. So fear is not just one boom concrete thing, it changes all the time, depending on your mood, you know. Uh, sometimes we're in a great mood, so, uh, big stress uh, doesn't even cause us too, much, um, too many issues. But here comes the kicker, stress, and fear manifest themselves somehow physically in us. And we, we need to address that. For example, you could get sweaty palms. You could get a little, you know, shake and tremble, a <coughs> frog in your throat. That is the physical manifestation of stress. People are joining, so I gotta um, do the Zoom master job here at the same time too. So we're on the same boat, stress, fear manifests itself somehow in our body. And it's up to us to recognize and then deal with it. Now, first step, first step. Now that you've seen everyone raising their hand when I said, Did you, have you ever had stress in your lives? Even if you think that you're a seasoned speaker and they should have really raised their hands, what does it make it? First takeaway, I know it sounds like, whoa, that's it, but it's actually quite a big one. It's normal. It is normal, you know? <laughs> Most people, when they are, um, when they have a stressful situation, they think it's just them. But by realizing it's not just you, everyone has stress. Me too, man. I'm not used to having three kids, my brother's kids, uh, next door. It's stressful to me because I'm just not used to it. These buggers wake up every morning, 5.50, knock, knock, knock on my door because to them it's exciting. They're like, Anki, 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 all day, all day. Oh my gosh, you know, until they go to bed by now. That's the reason why I said it at eight o'clock, hoping that they're already asleep. So it is stressful for me too. Now, how to deal with that? That's a, that's a big one. Now, what you can do is you can send me a little, you know, in the little chat function and I can then shout it out to everyone else, but everyone should be able to read anyway. Uh, examples of your fears and stress. Tell me, you know, you can send it to me now by chat and then I can see what it is that bugs you. You know, I just told you mine. The kids that I wasn't used to um, having around all day long, even though I love them, you know, I'm the uncle, but on a, on a daily basis, it's quite something. So don't be shy. Whoever wants to share, because you can't really share um, by unmuting yourself, it will be unbearable for everyone else because then if everyone wants to start chit chatting, uh, but what you can do is you can, uh, you, can send, um, you can send a message and share with everyone else. And then I can read it out loud and see, there you go, stress not to be free on the road. There you go, that's one stress, awesome. Then um, uh, the uncertain future, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that. Yes, excellent. Um, that I can't control my future. My brother's mental issues, okay. Um, then uh, first time in my life, I can't control my future. That's true. Okay, well, we'll talk about that too. I'm still not working on how to make money. Cool. So these are, you know, actually, some of them are quite existential fears that we have. And it's good to know that we're not, okay, Roberto is coming back here. So I don't know, do the Zoom master here at the same time. So it's important to understand that we're humans, not robots, and that we do have stress. And the stress comes from a fear whatever the fear might be, a bigger one or a smaller one. At the moment, due to corona, uh, it could be quite existential fears, you know, not being able to make money. How is my future going to pan out? No idea. I have no idea either. I have no idea about the, the tour guiding part of my life. Uh, yet, it's how we react to the fear. Now, the second one is we are, uh, to the stress. The second little token to take away is, um, as we dig deeper and deeper, it is fear-based. So it's normal. Everyone has, has stress. And two, it is fear-based. It's important to break it down because that's how I deal with stress okay. myself Live. and overcome it, okay? Can you mute you on the line? There. Can you mute yourself? Whoever that is, I think it's Letizia. I can, I can mute you here. I'm not mute. No, I'm you're not, not mute. but I, now you are. There you go. And uh, pan two, there you go. 
so then, um, where is it? Now, once you know it's fear, and I know it might be a little counterintuitive, but you're gonna look into the eyes of fear, whatever that might be. How I call them is I call them shadow hounds. If you have stress caused by fear, what's the usual reaction? You start running. You start running, you know, you, you, you crap your pants. And the faster you run, the faster seemingly your shadow hounds run too. And they seem to be coming closer and closer and closer and more and more and more. And by the end, you have, <laughs> you can hardly think because your own breath is like um, um, deafing you and maybe even nauseating you. Now, counterintuitive, I know you got to turn around, stop, turn around, and look the buggers into the eye. And you need to know, obviously, what it is it you're looking at? Otherwise, you can't, you can't do it. So, Pretending it's not here is the worst thing you can do. That's the reason why I said it's normal and it's fear-based. If you say, oh, um, it's here, and obviously you can feel it, but you're not dealing with it, is the worst thing you can do. I personally have learned to overcome this running away that all of us feel when a stress hits us because it's fear-based, and believe me, I know what it means. I've been twice in the hospital and almost died twice. I crapped my pants. I'm the first one admitting it openly. It wasn't easy at all. When seven years ago, I was in the hospital and they rushed me to the ICU because they couldn't bring down the fever and I couldn't breathe anymore. A virus disease, funny enough, now having another virus hitting us. So I know what it means, but you gotta address it. And I, because I know where, what I think about is where my attention goes to, where I can, what I can, what I focus on is how I experience reality. Allow me to now do our first exercise. Okay. It's a very simple one, but extremely powerful in my humble opinion. And I've been doing it for many years. Now, what you need for this is a piece of paper and you need a pen. And I'm going to time it. So what I'd like to ask you is, we're going to do this very fast, and it can then uh, just allow this impact work on you, hopefully the realization work on you. I call it the blue exercise. What I want you to do now is, in a minute, in a minute, once I've done uh, explaining it, what I would like you to do is you get up, you walk around, some of you are in a room, like in a small room, some of you are like maybe in a, in a bigger room. What I want you to do is just, I'll walk around and I will time it exactly. Uh, let's do one and a half minutes. It should be enough. That's 90 seconds. 90 seconds, walk around and try to remember everything. Either it's outside the window or it's, you know, it's in your neighbor, in the neighboring room or in the room that you're in right now. Anything, doesn't matter. Anything that has the color blue in it. Anything. Cool. And then after 90 seconds, I will do the ding, 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 ding. I will shout ding, ding, ding. So come back, sit down. And when you sit down, there should be a piece of paper ready and the pen should be right there. So at the moment, you don't do anything. You just walk around now. And the time, the timer has started. You got 90 seconds. Run around and try to remember anything and everything that you see in your room that has the color blue, okay? Well, apart from, for example, Maria, she's just looking at me. Well, if you are clairvoyant, if you have the power and the gift, beautiful. Um, I can't see Emma, if she's doing anything, I have no idea, but, um, or, or Craig for that matter. I can only encourage you, walk around. Sorry, the internet went down. That's why I lost some of it. Okay. No worries. Now go walk around and try, you got another minute, try to okay. memorize mm -hmm. anything that's blue. Anything that has the color blue in it. Doesn't matter which shade of blue, dark sure. blue, light blue, um, indigo, makes no difference, blue. I know I'm shouting, you get 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds to go, 30 more seconds to go. Twenty seconds to go, twenty seconds to go. 
Yalla, yalla, yalla. Steph, she's enjoying her cup of tea, so am I. We do a virtual long distance ka-ching, ka-ching. <laughs> and three, two, one. Please come back, please come back. Now you have a piece of paper and you got your pen. And now you have a minute and write down everything that you remember that has a color blue in it, everything. It doesn't have to be cool, fancy, big, small, um, of any value, anything, really. It doesn't matter, a button that you saw somewhere, a little, I don't know, makes a difference. Uh, the, the corner of um, a furniture, mm, a painting itself, a door, I don't know, curtain, doesn't matter. Anything that you saw, you saw, don't imagine it, that you actually saw in your room. And for this, we have another 30 seconds to go, sorry, 40 seconds to go. Thirty seconds to go. Write down, write down, write down. It doesn't have to be fancy. It's not a. It's not a. Who has more wins? No. It's just. It's. It's really and only for you. I'm just here to help you understand that everything is in the mind. Everything. Really, I'm telling you. Stress, love, uh, enjoyment, sickness. How to deal with um, our guests? It's in the mind in the end, and you can train your mind. You really can. And I'm living proof. And I'm a nobody, really. I'm not a Tiger Woods. I'm not a superstar. I'm just an average Joe that somehow has been um, blessed to, forced, I should say, to look into this. Oh, we're done. Yes, uh, Craig is done. Awesome. Now tally up how many items you were able to identify for yourselves with the color blue in it. For yourselves, you know, you know, and then you, if you want, you can, you can, you can send them to me. Just you know, either private or um, any language. Any language doesn't matter. Any language, uh, anything you want. This is not. A, this is not. A, this is not a. Who has more wins? This is um, uh, for you. Okay. You can either send to everyone or just to me. Again, it's not. It doesn't matter if you have who's who's the winner. Cool. It's for you. Now that we've done that, you know, if, uh, you have been able to tally it up. Everyone's finished. Cool. Now what I would like you to do, we do the same thing. We do the same thing without you getting up anymore. You sit where you are and you look at me, please. I need you to focus on me now. Try to write down anything and everything that had the color red in it. And you have now one minute. Anything you remember, look at me, don't look anywhere, otherwise that's cheating, look at me. Anything that has the color red in it, anything that you might remember. You see, it's an eye-opening exercise. It really is, it's quite, quite fascinating. These are simple things, you know, and uh, what I do here is just to help you really, because I have helpless syndrome and I want people to be happy and be able to deal with the stress more. And I know we're all on the same boat here. Not having a job as travel directors is very stressful for many people, I understand that. Um, and yet, I'm the very first one to say, it's how you deal with it that uh, keeps you sane or not. Cool, we got uh, 10 more seconds to go. And it seems that most people don't even know what to write because I've got quite many. Uh, no, no, only things that you've seen, Chantal, only things that you've seen, not in general. Stop. Cool. One minute. Now, look at the list that you wrote when it comes to the blue exercise. And I know many people who send me, you know, 12, 15, you know, this and that, the other. And many people in, in the blue chart, you know, so you get the blue column, you know how many items you recognize, you remember having blue in it a lot. It's, you know, you only looked around for 90 seconds, not a long time. And then uh, I would say, because uh, I'm going through all the, you know, in, to give you an idea, anything from, you know, 7, 8 to 16, 17 items, people could remember. There's no good, you know, good or bad, right or wrong. It's just for your own little comparison. And then in comparison, the yellow, uh, sorry, the red, Right. I have quite many people who send me nothing. Nothing. Your eyes saw red. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Yet, 
what you did for 90 seconds, you told your brain, look for blue. Nothing else matters. It's kind of like a Google, the thingy up here. It's kind of like a Google. You tell Google, you know, search engine, search, find X, blah, whatever. And it will find you whatever. And anything else and everything else doesn't matter so much. It really doesn't. Uh, who cannot hear me? Marina, Pudenza Marina. Where is Marina? There's so many people on the chat. It's hard for me to be able to help everyone because uh, Marina, can you hear me? Thumbs up? Yes, all good. Marina, Marina, maybe her internet is down. What can I say? Um, so, yeah, she can hear me, I guess. Two. Cool. You see a lot, and it doesn't matter how many. Blue, and in comparison, not a lot when it comes to red. Yet, you spend 90 seconds in the same little room looking at items as best as you could. So it's your mind, obviously, that creates your reality, nothing else. So it's how you view things that creates your reality, nothing else. I know it's a, it's a wowzer, or it's like, hmm, but it's huge, guys. It's powerful, I'm telling you. Once you are in a love-threading situation, it's up to, or in any situation, really, come, come with our guests on a tour, on a trip, sorry, on a trip. Mm, it's how you view things that help you overcome the situation and not the situation itself. I guarantee you, it is how you deal with it. No, the favorite color has it an influence or not? Yes, no, of course, you know, these are, I, can, I only randomly chose blue and I randomly chose uh, red this time. Sometimes I choose, I don't know, uh, yellow and green, you know, so it's just, but blue is kind of, you know, a uh, kind of cool uh, color to have. Now, third, third point. And I'm a huge believer in the third point, and that's my life's driver, if you wish. And it's called self-responsibility. Hmm. And it is third eye chakra. It's a sixth chakra, indigo colored, that has to do with self-responsibility. Now, if you accept the fact that you and no one else for 100%, of the time is responsible for whatever happens to you, then it's a life changer. Now I carry this baby with me, not this particular uh, bouncy ball, hence I called our workshop bouncy ball versus riding a horse. If you do not, and again, you can believe in anything you want, I'm just helping you to maybe accept a different belief system. If you believe that you have 100% power and self-responsibility, sixth chakra, indigo, then you are not a bouncy ball. Because if you don't believe in self-responsibility, then that makes you indeed a bouncy ball in a pawn in the hands of the universe. You're being thrown about, left, right, and center, up and down like a bouncy ball does, not really knowing where your journey ends. I do not believe in that at all. I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm not saying that because, you know, I'm a human being too, like everyone else too. I go through ups and downs. But especially when it comes to tougher times, and at the moment these are tougher times, I tell myself, do I allow the universe to throw me about like a bouncy ball or am I the master of my universe? I guarantee you, 99 out of times, I will say, I'm not a bloody bouncy ball. I'm not. I ride my horse. I don't want to be thrown about. Um, it's my own reaction to the situation that makes me happy or unhappy, to keep it super simple. Not the situation itself. Obviously, if the situation is, you know, blue skies, palm trees, vacation time, it makes it easier to enjoy, obviously, versus a bitter cold snowstorm. I understand that. But in general, I have come to accept the fact that it's me who makes the situation bearable, uh, manageable, and hopefully for uh, many times, um, in many times, enjoyable. Self-responsible, what does it mean? It has nothing to do with fault at all, you know, something happens to you. Let's say, um, I know, something random. Uh, somebody 
uh, uh, leaves a baby at your doorsteps. A random act. Is it your fault? No, it's not. Some, some person decided to just leave their baby at your doorsteps. But it's your responsibility to look after the baby. It really is. You, there is a traffic, there is an accident on the road as a TD. It's not your fault, is it? But it's your responsibility to deal with it. It is. And it's bringing it to our TD lives on a daily basis when we're on the road. And hence also when it comes to here, you know, being stuck in this, in my case, at my brother's house. And thank God I get along with him very well, I should say. And I love his kids too. When something happens on, on, on the road, I always say, look, not my fault, nobody's fault really, for the most part, but it's my responsibility. And when I say it's my responsibility, the second thing is, oh man, there is an opportunity actually to shine when it comes to our guests. You know that too, right? Life is more or less, more or less a perpetual opportunity to overcome a challenge. And when you overcome a challenge yourselves, be it a small one like how to use Zoom, you feel great, don't you? Right, you do. You're like, you achieved something. You achieved something. It's a very small thing. Believe it, you know. Or we, we all had to deal with this, you know, the, is there too many of our bosses in the call? I'm not even so sure if there are too many of our bosses in the call. Like the new technology that they introduce, you know, oh my gosh, a pain in our butts. I know. But once you know how to do it, how is it? Oh my, you know, I don't know how to do it. That's, how cool is that? You know. So um, a sense of achievement that makes you happy. I assure you, it doesn't matter what the achievement is. It doesn't matter what the uh, the challenge is. When you do it, small or large, you accomplish something, and it makes you ultimately happy. And life is, believe it or not, until we die, basically a perpetual journey of having to overcome hurdles and if you accept that it makes your life a lot easier i'm telling you so and i have tattooed this into my um, skin here one thing that i believe a hundred percent a thousand percent all day every day uh, a phrase that's coined by uh, a guy called heraclitus of ephesus pantare everything flows the river I stepped in today is not the same river that I stepped in the other day. You observe the river of his hometown of Ephesus, which is in today's Greece. But in the old days, you know, 2,500 years ago, when Heracles lived, was part of ancient Greece. He actually is the first, the, the, the pre-philosopher. And he is the one who realized that nothing ever remains the same. Nothing. So if you have a shitty day, and mind me saying, I hope there is not one of our bosses in here, if you've got a terrible day, shitty day, and it doesn't matter if the, the, the terrible day is because of being on the road, you know, or at home now, and you're worrying about your future, money, can I make it, you know, stress, or you have the most awesome first date of your life. You make out, you have a great dinner, you have fantastic wine, oh my gosh, shit and wonderful, neither of the two ever remain forever, ever. So, and I've been in hospital, spent months and months in hospital, I'm telling you, two year chemotherapy, surgery, the whole nine yards. What helped me is I realized, man, today's a shitty day. But tomorrow, hopefully, won't be a shitty day. Today is an awesome day, fantastic day. I better enjoy it, because tomorrow could be a shitty day, or just an average day, I do not know. Pantare, guys, I assure you, if you can embrace that somehow, you'll realize that life is a constant up and down and everything just flows the way it does and it's your reaction to it. Cool, so we talked about that. Self-responsibility, we will get back to that because there is a lot of things we can do about self-responsibility, but we have a few more sessions to go and I don't want to bore the hell out of you. Now, when it comes to uh, us as travel directors, how can we, uh, what is one of the, the easiest things on, um, that you can do to reduce your stress on the road? It sounds profane, but it's actually profound. And that would be preparation. Preparation, man. I'm telling you. 
I've been on stage many times. I've been in front of groups many times. And I'm not I'm just talking about it as a travel director, just in general, you know. And if I'm not prepared, holy shit, I crap myself because I'm not prepared. I do not know what I'm talking about, you know. But if you're prepared and you know what you're going to be talking about and you know it in your sleep, it takes away 80% of your stress, 80%. Now let's reduce, condense this to your... Uh, the very first time we interact with our, with our guests. What would that be? That would be our welcome reception, our welcome speech, like the make it or break it. If we shine, then everyone loves us. If we're not so good, hmm, then it's a, an uphill battle after that. If you prepare for that opportunity the best possible way you can, you got the jokes right, you got the agenda right, it takes 20 minutes and not 50 minutes. You condense it so there is a beginning, a middle, and an end. Oh boy, oh boy, you are a star. And you don't sweat, you don't tremble, uh, you don't have sweat patches here. You can actually talk, speak, breathe, all is cool. Why? Because you, you prepared yourself for that. Now, usually you know, when I'm uh, live with people, it's a lot easier because we can do some exercise here. But what we can do now is you can send me messages what you think, what you can do when it comes to, you know, the very first, uh, the, the welcome reception, welcome talk. It's, an, it's a, it's a hands-on example that everyone knows what I'm talking about. So how can you prepare for that? Just throw at me, either publicly or privately, what you think you can do to be prepared. Oh, I can see Chini. Ciao. Namaste. I can't hear because you're muted, but... Um, uh, I'm good. Thank you, Dr. Q. You're awesome, fantastic. Buddy, awesome. Thank you for joining. You're fantastic. So, what is it that you can do? So, sleep well, breathe. Yes, cool. You can do that. Sure. Stefan said that. Yes, of course. It's, let's, let's, let's focus on technical. You know, there's two things. That's how I at least look at it. One is the technical preparation technical and the second one would be um energetic energetic preparation mm -hmm. so technical energetic let's focus just on the technical part because that's something that you can utilize right away and the energetic part is a little deeper so let's talk about the technical things that you can do to shine on the very first day you meet your guests technical not spiritual not energetic technical I already told you one thing. It's study guests via talks. Awesome, Roberto, great. Mm -hmm. Yes, study them. Where are they from? For example, attire, how you dress, correct. You don't want to be sloppy, yes. Smile, very good. That's like a winner. I'm telling you the number one thing. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you the one thing that changes everything and doesn't cost a dime is your smile. That's it. Whether you feel shitty or not, I don't give a shit. People pay me money for me to tell them that. It doesn't matter how you feel, whether you are sick, fever, tired, makes no difference. You better smile. You better smile when you talk to other people, especially when they pay you to be their host, obviously. So you smile. And at some point you internalize it and then it becomes your, your mask. And I mean it in the most possible loving way. Really, I do. I'm a human, human person. I'm talking to human beings. Me, and otherwise, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. Um, it's, it's the number one winner. It's the number one winner. And I can give you bad examples when it comes to the smiling. I'm in a hospital, and I assure you guys, I assure you, I've had a thousand needle pricks. One thousand. More than that. More than a thousand. Basically, my veins on my left side are shot. They're dead. You cannot draw any blood anymore. Uh, and then the... the, 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 the the physicians the, come into my room to draw blood. I embrace the ones that, that smile at me. They still do blood, you know, because to me that's horrible because, you know, with all the chemotherapy, this is the worst thing you can do to me. It triggers off uh, stress in me. And most of these bloody physicians, they treat you as a number. So I'm like, fuck you. 
But if somebody walks in with a smile, say, hello, how's it going? I'm so sorry, I have to draw blood today. Fine. No worries, you know, I know you're doing your job and it's okay, I can deal with that. So if you smile, I'm telling you, even at the worst possible time, you can't hear me, Pam? You cannot hear me? Pam? You can hear me, no? She's like, I can't hear, I can't hear. Well, oh, somebody wants to someone, switch off their, uh, maybe mute. it's Chini. I see, I see, mute. There you go. Uh, mute it, Chini. There you go. Okay. Uh, you got to be muted, otherwise uh, people can't hear. There you go. Thank you. I, I got you. I didn't hear. Let me just uh, mute everyone. You're supposed to be muted to not interfere with anyone else. Smiling. So they come, they pay money, and they want to be greeted by us uh, with a warm smile, not a fake smile. And if you truly can internalize that, it's a winner. So it's a technical thing you can learn, just well, it's actually an energetic thing. Uh, but um, since so many of you sent me um, uh, smile, 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 um, I mentioned it. But it's actually an energetic thing that you can do when it comes to smiling. Technical stuff, guys. What, can you, what technical things can you do to be ready? Technical. Easy, I'm telling you, technical. Some of you said dress well. Yes, absolutely. It's, it makes a make it or break it. If, you, if you're sloppy and you got, you know, I don't know, coffee stains on your, on your sweatshirt, forget about it, you know, it's terrible. Um, you already lost. You already lost. Uh, buddy, Chini, you, you need to be muted, my friend. You need to be muted. There is music in the background and people, uh, they complain. You need to be muted. I'm sure they get it. Can you hear me now? No, we don't want to hear you because there is music no. in the background. There is, uh, yeah, I don't know, 30, 30 people or so in the, in the room. And there's oh, sorry, music. sorry, sorry. Cool. So you can't you hear me now? Muted. Is it music? It's all good. You can listen to me, no worries, but I've got to mute you. Cool. Um, technical stuff. Write down your speech, word by word, if need be. Write it down. 20 minutes, 15 minutes. It needs to be short and sweet. It's the winner. It's like your, um, your money shot. That's it. It's your money shot. That's your money shot speech. That's the very first one that wins them or, or, or you lose them right away. So you better invest time, energy in preparing an awesome welcome speech. And if you do not know how to do it, ask someone to coach you. I'd be happy to help, no worries. Uh, you gotta write it down. There's gotta be middle, beginning, a middle, and an end. It's gotta be. And you wanna tell in those 15 or 20 minutes everything you wanna tell them. You wanna get rid of all the other nonsense that you put in too because you need to remember these poor people are jet lagged. Long flight, jet lag, all they want to do is just listen to your quick talk, have some food, have a drink, and go to bed. That's what they want to do. So you better write it down. You know exactly what you want to say. Don't put it out of your armpits the moment you arrive. Be prepared. One, learn it by heart as best as you can. You don't want to use notes. You know, do, I, do I have notes here? No. If I, if I, were, if I were reading it off of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a note, a cheat sheet, it's not so cool. You want to be able to t see me in your face, be engaging instead of, uh, you know, playing this. No good. Any speech you give, any speech. No notes. Terrible. It's the first thing you got to get rid of. Look, write it down, word by word. Be ready, prepare, especially for the first one or the big ones that you give. <clears throat> Excuse me. You got to practice it, of course. Practice. How can you practice? Just one or two things. Uh, in front of a mirror. You observe your, your own actions, hand gestures, the way you speak, the way you have your um, head movement. Watch yourselves in a mirror. You can take it a notch up, have somebody, or, and then you can film yourself in the mirror if you don't have a friend or, or a spouse. Even cooler would be somebody else films you, not you in the mirror yourself, but somebody else films you, and then you watch it, I'm telling you, you'd be shocked. You would be shocked. The way you talk, your voice, your gestures, you're not used to it, and that's what people see. Man, oh man, you can iron out a gazillion things that you do that are unnecessary or annoying, flat out annoying. Like, I don't know, you do this all the time or you do this all the time or uh, adjust your clothes all the time. You're not aware of it, but once you watch yourself, you're like, oh my gosh, that's what I do? Oh my lordy. And they've been suffering from this for the past 20 years, and I thought I'm the coolest uh, welcome speech giver ever. But you're not, you know? So you can do that. Then you can take it up another notch. You can have friends listen to you. Why not? 
why not and if you don't want to have if you don't want to invite friends have just um some what i do with some people is um i put these um uh, teddy bears little ducklings or so across the room pretending there are people sitting and i force them to look at each one of them as they give a speech so that's already advanced um speech giving but um anyway so that's what you can do too it helps you get ready for it so and um presentation mirror uh, you can record yourself or have somebody record you and use all these little props to help you become a better speaker so that's technical parts technical if you wish to some extent then um, um what i do from an energetic point of view what did i do now on today for to quite a few of you i was in the call in the zoom meeting 15 minutes before it started why maybe there are people that i do not know so for the first 15 minutes i could just chit chat and say hey nice meeting you you know which region you're in where are you here where is this you know so that's um an opportunity to break the ice before you even officially start working so what i do welcome speech before that i walk around and shake every single guest's hand every single one of them of course before they sit down you know so i i put a lot of effort and energy i do but it helps i'm telling you you break the ice you you you, you create rapport connection they love you oh my gosh he shook my hand, this and that, the other. So you go the extra mile. So from an energetic point of view, uh, you go also and check out where you will give the welcome speech. I always want to know where is it, if it's possible, of course. You know, is it how is the layout of the room? Where will people sitting? Are they going to be looking at me? Will there be noise because the waiters come for the food? You know, all these kind of things you want to get good at. Energetic things, you know, that, uh, that make you ready for that. Then you want to be relaxed, you know, you want to be calm, calm. What makes you happy? If you're a nervous type, you know, after a while, of course, it makes no difference and, and you know what to do. But uh, if you are the nervous type, you got to do a few things that tricks your mind into being relaxed. What could that be? Hmm. You listen to music that you like. When I had my, um, um, I, I had my travel business, I had to give a lot of, a lot of uh, trade show um, presentations. Man, I hyped myself up before before the, the talk. I was listening. I was in the mood, overcoming uh, uh, excitement and being a little nervous. Stage fright. Boom! I was ready. Jump on stage. Give the talk. It's a sales pitch. Done deal. You can do that too. You know, uh, either a call, the pump, uh, a music that pumps you up, or a music that calms you down, depending on the type of person that you are. Eat chocolate. If chocolate makes you happy, man, pop a chocolate. All good. I'm not necessarily saying that you should go for alcohol, but if it makes your mind a little calmer, have a sip of wine or whatever you do, if that helps from an energetic point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, what else can you say? Uh, and a big thing which we can talk about uh, in one of the next sessions, what I do in general in life period, doesn't matter what I do, I prepave. There is a meditation technique called prepaving, and we will get into that. You can preset the whole energy field and the outcome of what it is that you're aiming for. We can talk about that maybe next time already, depending on what it is that you want to. Um, uh, what you want to do the tip is what can you do for social distancing? Well, you know, you can you can invent a few things when it comes instead of hugging because I'm a hugger You can you can in what I did with the kids here because uh, there are three kids in, in our household They're you know three and five mm. so we invented uh, uh, Snails kiss snails hug something like that. You know, you invent someone people just jump on it. They do it's like oh instead of hugging kiss and this and that you just invent a little game and everyone really um, um, usually takes it on board if it's cute they love it doesn't matter if you hug and kiss or you do little uh stand hugs cool so that's the energy uh, point of view now um in uh, uh i want to do a quick recap here it's normal stress fear normal you're not alone in this cool i have stress and fear too i really do i'm the first one admitting it Stress is fear-based, and you got to address the fear. How does it manifest in you? When it happens to me, more often than not, because I've been practicing, obviously, is I try to feel where does the stress kick in. For example, 
I'm so nervous, I can hardly breathe. It's okay, it's in my breath today. Or, oh my gosh, I'm nervous. My hands are so wet, holy moly, you know? So today, it's the hands. Or, <clears throat> I can hardly speak. Oh, today is my, my throat. There is a frog in my throat. And it could be a combination of it too. If you're like super nervous, stressed out, it could be a combination of it. But I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, trust me, trust me, trust me. That's the reason why you're paying me the big bucks here. You need to identify where the stress manifests itself in you. Because if you can pinpoint it, and after a while you will be able to, I assure you, if you know where it is, oh, today, um, it's a tingling in my soles, foot, uh, feet. Today, it's a twitching. And as soon as you recognize where your fear manifests itself, that moment, and you become, then you become an observer. It's not eating you alive anymore. You distance yourself. Oh, my fear today is my heart beats so fast. That's interesting. Do you see the shift of energies? It's a huge shift, I'm telling you. You become an observer. It starts coming down your mind and then you can continue performing or dealing with corona or whatever it is. But you gotta do it constantly. Otherwise it doesn't really work. Mm, so stress, normal, it's fear-based. You are responsible for anything that happens to you, period, anything. I really don't care what it is. You're responsible how you deal with it. Something is thrown at you, and then it's your choice to either ride your horse or be a bouncy ball. I, this is the reason why I carry this baby with me many times, because uh, I take responsibility, period. How I react to it. I'm not saying it's easy, guys. I'm not saying it's easy mm, or simple. It's simple, but not easy. Easy, but not simple. And what was the last thing we talked about? Oh, and of course, preparation. You're gonna be prepared. Doesn't matter, it's, especially when it comes to you as, as travel directors. So that's a little recap. Now, the reason why I asked you, remember the blue exercise with it? Blue exercise? 90 seconds, you only focused on blue. What did your brain equaling Google tell you? A lot of blue stuff, a lot of it. And I asked you, give me red. Hardly any red, hardly any. Because your mind, your mind created the reality that you're in. And once you can grab it, with both hands, I'm telling you, you lead a much, much better life, much easier life. Uh, and I did crazy things in life. You know, I, I spent a, a long time with shamans in the deep jungle and I did silent meditation because, you know, almost dying a few times. Yes, very cool. I see that, uh, um, Sarah. Yes, yeah, I, I saw that too because this is the whole, everyone's here. Now, mind, one more time. So there is another exercise you can do. It hopefully helps you. And it's a very simple, for those of you who are not into meditation, a very simple exercise. It's called the candle light exercise. Now, it makes it easier for people to start the habit of meditation, or when you're traveling on, you know, on the road as travel directors, you need to calm down. Somehow you need to calm down. Really, there's only two things. One is your breath, and one is your mind. Most people, I'm not addressing you at all, of course not, most people, escape into a few things to numb their stress. Number one number is alcohol. Number one number. <gasps> I'm so stressed out. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. I need to have a beer, I need to have a drink, and I need this and that. Oh my gosh, too much. Number one. Uh, you can, you can uh, get, take it a little further. Oh, I, I, I don't know, I need a smoke. I need something that's stronger than a smoke, a strong smoke. I need to, I don't know, whatever. Some other people, to deal with the stress that they have, Eat, oh my gosh, um, I gotta eat. I gotta eat something, I gotta just keep myself busy. Sweets or just food in general, stress. That's how they escape into dealing or numbing stress. Or you can train your mind to just calm down automatically. There is really no reason. And I, and I like alcohol, don't get me wrong. I wish I could drink more alcohol because my liver has been impacted since my chemotherapy. I can't drink that much. But I understand what people like to drink because it, it's, it's good. I understand, so don't get me wrong, I'm not judging anyone. I'm just saying, 
you can overdo it and that's the problem then. now what you can do you can uh, you can train your mind what i do and when, uh, it's a tea light a little tea light that is no weight at all i carry that with me many times on trips many many times it's a very simple thing you can do and obviously i couldn't find my lighter because uh, i'm here guess it's my brother so i came with a very small suitcase not thinking i'll be here seven weeks already oh my gosh seven bloody weeks i'm here holy smokes i'm telling you i came with a small suitcase and when i came it was freezing cold and i got two shirts with me and if it doesn't change soon i gotta go and buy some stuff you know because there is no way i can go back to hungary because the borders are shut anyway so what you do is you light your candle it could be tea light you know it could be tea light anything something super simple it doesn't cost any money really it doesn't cost much and I do it many times, so my drivers know that I'm a little crazy. I do crazy things on, 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 on my trips. Um, crazy, this kind of crazy, you know, not, not crazy, crazy stuff. So what I do in order to calm my mind and to get into the mood, what you can do is um, you have a candle, which, remember the blue exercise? You focus your mind on the light. And I, and I keep it up so you can see what I'm trying to say. So you, all you do is you focus your mind, you look at the flame, right? You look at it. And then as you look at the flame, you just start slowly closing your eyes. And as you close your eyes, you want to hold on to that picture that you see in your third eye. Do you know what I mean? So I'm seeing now a flame. I see a flame, I see a flame, I see a flame. And gradually I'm closing my eyes and I see, still see a flame. And I try to hold this image for as long as I can. And as soon as that image in my third eye goes away, I open my eyes again and I say, flame, I see the flame, I see the flame. And then I close my eyes and then I play a game with myself. How long can I focus with my eyes closed on the flame and still see the flame? In my third eye. And if you're really trained, if you train your mind, you can do so for quite a long time. I'm telling you, not an easy thing. I'm telling you, it's not easy, not easy. I understand. Simple but not easy, easy but not simple. And if you start playing this game, you realize that after a while, your mind only focuses on this baby. And when your mind only focuses on one thing, what can it then quite logically? not do focus on something else and the something else and that's the reason why we have this session today is the situation that causes you stress whatever the situation might be yes it's very powerful it's simple but super powerful and you and only you remember self-responsibility sixth chakra bouncy ball it's you who can change it not I, not anyone else, but I can give you some tools to do it. And the more often you do it, I assure you, the more you can deal with stress without having to numb the stress like most people do. And numbing would be this or this or eat like crazy. Numbing. You don't want to do that. So one of them, meditation technique, flame. You want to hold the flame for as long as you possibly can. Cool? A, another meditation technique that you can play that's a little more advanced than, than this, because that's the easiest, in my opinion. That's easiest, because you see something. And as long as there is movement, your mind can deal with it better. Movement. Even when you think about it, close your eyes and think about some sort of movement, easier for you to create it. But if you just focus on one thing that doesn't move at all, boy, that's very hard. Very hard. Now, and now, when we meet again in two weeks, I would like to get feedback from you, how, how you're doing. Now, a very big one is the counting down from 10 to one. With your mind, with your eyes closed and focusing on the number 10. We can, we can do it together, you're gonna close your eyes. And we try to just focus on the number 10. And the bigger, the bigger the number it is, is that you can visualize, the bigger, like the periphery of your, as, as far as you can in theory see with your eyes closed, 
So it's pre a pretty big circle that I can see around my face. That's how big you want to do it. So it's quite big. It's like three times my, my head, I would say. Three times or more than that, actually. Five, five, five times. And you want to fill that circle with a big number, 10. Big, really big. And you want the 10 to touch the periphery. And ideally, you want to give it a color. Big, make it big, I'm telling you. Your mind needs to be occupied somehow because our minds are freaking beasts. Beasts, they make or break us, period. So make them big because so there is something, that's how I do it, big, you know, thick one from here to here. I'm explaining exactly what I see now. And a thick zero here. So that's a 10 for me, from my point of view. From your point of view, it would be a zero and a one. So that's how I see it. And I give the one a red, completely, you know, thick red, and I give the zero a yellow. That's what I see. And try to focus on that. One, zero, 10. You can give the 10 the same color, the one and the zero, or different colors. It makes a difference. And then once you have held the 10 for a second or two, I know it sounds easy, but it's not. I'm telling you, it's very hard. But only years or weeks, months, and years of experience and practicing, it gets easier and easier. And then you remove the 10 and you bring in the nine. Big, fat nine that covers your vision, the whole thing. And then you go to eight and then you go to seven and so forth. Cool. And you want to hold that picture for as long as you can, for as long as you can. And if you are super honest with yourself, because, you know, there's no right or wrong, there's no one winning or losing or so, it's here for me to just tell you. If you can hold the baby, like the one number, without thinking of anything else for one second in the beginning, you're a winner. That's how long a second is, 21. That was a second. If you can hold one number for that long, you're a winner already. So the 10, count 21. Nine, 21. Eight, 21, and so forth. And then you want to hold it for two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, and then instead of from 10 to one, you do 20 to one, you do 100 to one, and then you're in it for like an hour or two. I've meditated sitting on my butt for 10 hours nonstop. I'm ter terrible, super terrible, not easy at all. And I'm far from being a master, far. I'm just a little student compared to people that I saw. But it's possible. It really is. And not all the time either because the monkeys, you know, left, right, and center, they, they jump on you and they try to distract you. But for short periods, you're like, oh, my gosh, complete clarity, complete silence, no stress. And you can use it, I'm telling you, because I do it myself when I'm on tour. Sorry, when I'm getting a trip. You, if you do this, you can train your mind to not having to need numbers. No. Calm your mind. So that's a second technique that I'm telling you. We can go deeper into it later on if you want to. And last but not least, one that's super fast acting, super fast. And I use it quite often myself when I get stressed out. It's the breath. The breath is what makes or breaks us. It's much easier to deal with than your mind, much easier. And it's super hands-on right away, showing you right now. Most of us, and I'm the first one admitting to it too, most of us do breast or lung, uh, uh, chest breathing, chest breathing, like most adults. As babies or small kids, what we do is we do belly breathing. Calm, relaxed, beautiful. And sometimes, you know, when we get older, we forget and we're just chest breathers. <laughs> fast. And when you are stressed out, how do you breathe? You do a fast chest breathing, fast. Now, what I've realized, and again, I've been many times in stressful situations, if you move your attention down to your belly, and the way you can do it is super easy because I just showed you, I move my hands onto my belly, and we grab you can't see me, so you gotta trust me that I now have my hands on my 
belly going down, right? Going up, so it's on my belly, and it helps you too because then your mind, which is the tricky part to, to deal with, your mind now knows, okay, focus on the bloody belly, right? Because you're physically helping your mind to deal with it. Now that your hands are in your belly, you then breathe in consciously past your chest into your belly. And you can count one, two, three, or 21, 22, 23. And as you do so, you push your belly out, right? You breathe in, nose, push your belly out because you're focusing, you give your mind an exercise. And that's a stress dealing technique. Breathe in, hands on the belly, belly comes out. Three seconds. You hold for a second or two, keeping your mind busy, and then you breathe out again, if you wish, nose, or mouth, but nose is better. So what does your mind do? It's a blue exercise, just a different spin on it. Your mind is busy observing you breathing. It goes into your belly because your hands put your focus on your belly. Your mind can't think of a crazy, crazy, I was meant to say crazy shit, sorry, it's just a crazy shite. And it brings relaxation to you fast, fast. Many times my brother, my, 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 my coach drivers know when I'm in, sitting in the front and I feel, oh my gosh, it is a stressful situation for me and I don't want stress. Who does really? They see me, they observe me doing this 10 times. Because 10 times takes a couple minutes if you do it slowly. And for, if you're focused on it, totally focused on it for a couple minutes, then your mind has shifted already. And so the stress comes down, when stress comes down and I'm not so much afraid of whatever I'm afraid of, bad questionnaires, unhappy guests, Joe being upset with me or you know, whatever, then uh, I can think clearly to find a solution to whatever the issue might be. Because I don't know, there is a traffic jam or there's this and that, the other, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And then I realize, oh man, it's just a freaking uh, traffic jam and we can find a solution easily, you know? Who cares if we're late or not? So I told you two meditation techniques, a breathing technique, and um, I don't wanna talk your ears off either. What you can't, <laughs> somebody says, I can't see colors when you do this, um, um, uh, X to 10 to one. Well, it will come to you. It will come to you. The more you keep your mind busy, the more it knows what to do. Believe me, trust me, it's not easy at all, but it's the first step. Um, I shall say, um, I, I'm, I'm happy for you to uh, give, um, give some feedback if you want to. Uh, in recap, we did just uh, the, the basic stuff, you know, uh, on which to build because I can't just jump into it with uh, no, not being on the same level. At least now I know what you know and then we can build on it and you can tell other people and they can then send me um, questions for next time in two weeks. So I promise Joy to do this every fortnight. Unless you're like, oh my gosh, awesome, let's do it next week already, then I'm happy to do that too. I'm here to help you, really. It's, I, 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 it just came to me being stuck in my brother's house, and he is, he is, uh, um, I have a great relationship with him. I just realized, oh, my lordy, some of you, because I was observing the chats and stuff, maybe it helps you by me sharing with you my two cents in overcoming some of the stress that we're all exposed to today uh, for an extended period of time. And I, the, this ain't going to stop anytime soon. So um, it's hard to just say, um share um give us some uh feedback or or you know uh what is it that you want to talk about because it's an an online a zoom thing what you can do if i may suggest the following you can raise your hand you know there is a little feature um you can raise your hand and whoever wants to raise their hand i can unmute you and you can you can share Whoever wants to share something, don't be shy. Raise your hand and everyone who wants to talk can do so. Or you just uh, jump ahead and unmute yourself and start talking. But please know not everyone can talk at the same time because there is 30 people in this chat at the moment. 
Cool. So Letizia, just raise your hand. I don't know if you did it on purpose or not. No. <laughs> you didn't do it on purpose. Okay, no worries. It's just there. So lower the hand. Fine. Anyone else? Don't be shy. And let me see if I can see everyone here. So it's spread out on two. Uh, Craig, I don't know if Craig has uh, done it on purpose or not. Craig? No, yeah, I think my kids been up the whole time. It was uh, just to say hello to everyone. Oh, hello. I'll, I'll, I'll lower it, but uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Sure thing. Hello. Hey, hey Craig. Thank you. No worries, kid. Okay, so anyone else? Don't be shy, don't be shy. Uh, it's spread on two pages here. If I want to, don't be shy. I won't bite, as you know. Can I say something? Sure, Elaine, lovely having you. <laughs> thank you for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining. And thank you Q for hosting, it's been fantastic. I look forward to next week. It's officially I'm not very two good weeks, presenting. Joe, week, but um, let me talk to Joe and see, um, or to, to our peeps, you know, to my gang. We can have it done next week too, it's not an issue. I'm happy to, oh, to do it. As many um, weeks as you want, We're, we'll be here. <laughs> we're stuck <laughs> we're not going anywhere <laughs> we're not going anywhere i must wonder why that is you know but lovely to see everyone <laughs> yes. thank you for joining us elaine very sweet of you I'm thank you so much thank yeah. you everyone thank you lane anyone else guys anyone else don't be shy so what i can offer you is you can send me um any questions or requests for next time i'm more than happy to pinpoint and uh, custom tailor um, as we learn more and more and more I've been doing it for one or two years you wouldn't believe it um, so I'm, I'm happy to share my two cents and um, you send it to me either you can share it here on the chat but what I do now is I'm sending everyone in this meeting you can send me an email to uh, dr. Q at dr. Q M O A Y D dot com that's my email address or you can send me a WhatsApp. Many of you who are in my, you know, PDP group one or two or, you know, whatever. Um, do you have my phone number anywhere? But I'm happy to share it. That's my WhatsApp. If you need my, my WhatsApp, we're so happy for you to send me. It's uh, sent to everyone. That's my WhatsApp number um, and um, my email address. You can do so now in the chat too or in uh, Microsoft Teams, you know, the, the, the new thing that the company came up with. You can send your questions there too. Now, officially, officially, it's in two weeks from now. So in two weeks from today, that will be already the first week of May, as far as I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken, so it will be May 6th. Uh, but if there is a strong desire for having it on April 29th, we can do it April 29th too, but I would need your feedback for that. And then I let everyone know that it's already next week and not in two weeks from now. So I had originally agreed with Joy every two weeks for a few weeks and see how far it goes. And um, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Mille grazie, merci beaucoup, danke schön. And my new home town, new home country, uh, Hungary, Kersunem, you know, per se no. There's a lot of us in the word thank you in Hungarian. So in order for you to learn how to pronounce it, just think of Kissy, kissy, you're lovely. You know, uh, the U uh, sound, uh, three of them. Uh, so, no. Hungarian for thank you. And, uh, and namaste. It was wonderful having you. I have recorded it all. I've recorded it all. And uh, I will make this available. Um, I would say uh, either on my YouTube channel or, or was Trafalgar somewhere they haven't yet told me where I can post it no idea um, so people can listen to it and um, take away one or two hopefully gold nuggets thank you guys namaste thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you Let's thank you 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 it was wonderful. It was amazing, Thank you. So Excellent. Thanks. Let's awesome, Q. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Q. Dr. Q, you're the best. You're the best. Merry snail hug, snail hug, snail hug. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Grazie. Brilliant. Pussy, pussy, Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. 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 Thank Good evening, you guys. You take care. Thank you. See you, Thank you. At least in two weeks. Uh, yeah, at the latest in two weeks. Okay. Thank you. Bye. I'm just trying to leave the meeting. Oh, thanks. All you gotta do is stop. Yep, you can leave meeting. Leave meeting. Pussy, pussy, pussy. Bacho, bacho. I don't know. Bacho. Pussy, pussy. Pussy, pussy. Bacho. I don't know. Bacho. Yes, indeed. I'm gonna stop this video. Yeah, stay in the comments. Ciao.